It's too freaking hot. Uh. Uh. Let's get down to it. Hey YouTube, Cody here, and you know what today's video is? It's another Cody Vlogs, what I think of, insert brand here. And this time it's going to be in Fanta. Uh, for my first one of these I talked about Angelic Pretty releases, so I thought, hey, I might as well jump over to one of my favorite brands of all time, in Fanta, because they need more publicity, honestly, they really do. So in this video, I put on my Facebook page what prints I was going to be discussing. And uh, if you wanted me to talk about a different print, or there's a print in this video that I just don't talk about, feel free to comment below, message me on my Facebook, on my Tumblr, saying, hey, I really wish you talked about this one, and I'll come back to it in another video. Just do a separate video for that print, or a bunch of prints I just didn't talk about that other people wanted me to discuss. Um, now I'm going to explain first how I sort of uh, decided which prints to talk about in the video and which ones not. Uh, for me, I was really going on which prints were released around December 2013 to now. So there is one print in this video that actually just released, so it wasn't all on the Facebook page. It's going to kind of be a surprise print. Either way, let's get started. Now, something you may not know about me, or you already do know, is that I love fairy tale prints in Lolita fashion. I know they're kind of like cliche, but each brand seems to have a different take on that, and I feel like Infanta just blows everybody else out of the water with it. It's just, I see so many very well thought out and just all around lovely fairy tale prints from Infanta, whereas the other other brands kind of tap into it. I'm looking at you, baby. And, you know, it sometimes just doesn't feel like something that princess would wear. Or that fairy tale woman would wear, you know? I feel like for the most part, Infanta really gets into the nitty gritty of what that fairy tale's about. And that's where we're going to start with Infanta. Last year, they released their Snow White and Sleeping Beauty prints, which were phenomenal. I saw on Tumblr so many people just oogling over them, and I was like, yes, oogle over Infanta because it's just so beautiful. And those are two GSKs that are actually on my current wish list, which I'll hopefully be able to get for my birthday. But enough about them. When this year rolled around at the end of last year, they started chucking out some more fairy tale prints. Um, it just bam, 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 fairy tales. And I was just like, oh, all the wishing in the world, the dream dresses have arrived. Because they're all so very lovely. The first one I'm going to talk about is Alice Story. Now, this is actually a series they're doing. Um, it has a bunch of different pieces in it. And I'm going to list all in the video all the, all like the size information, the what comes in each um, in the series, and the colorways and whatnot. So you get to see that on the screen right now while I'm talking about it, instead of me just having to look at a paper and check that information out to you. Now, Alice's story, I think, was a very interesting take on what they could have done with Alice in Wonderland. Whenever I see other brands do something Alice in Wonderlandy, it kind of goes wah wah wah. Because Alice in Wonderland and Lolita have really always been associated with each other. So it feels kind of like that's already been done and then overdone and overkilled and just kind of like, eh. But I feel like Infanta really revived it in a more modern look. Most of their fairy tale prints actually look rather, um, like sort of mature, classy, and fall more into the gothic and classic styles of Lolita fashion. But this one has this youthfulness to it that's not OTT sweet, but it blends sweet Lolita with classic. 
I really like the colorways they chose for this because they feel like Alice colors. Like where body lines Alice dress falls flat with their colorways, this print really sticks to the colors we're given in the Disney versions and in Lewis Carroll's original um, Through the Looking Glass and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Uh, just all around incredibly lovely. Um, I love how the print seems to move. Like you get this sense of motion with it and it kind of feels like we're falling into this wonderland with Alice. I know that's kind of a lot on a dress and maybe some people wouldn't appreciate that but for me it kind of makes me want to wear it because it pulls me in. The print is very driving and all around I feel the youthfulness of Alice. This sort of optical illusion look they have on the dress which was created by the sort of trees popping in and you're sort of wandering in through the trees with Alice and the rabbit and all the motifs you no, from Alice in Wonderland. All around, I really like it. I'm so glad they put an apron with it, but the apron doesn't look silly. Like, there's a complete difference between the apron that Infanta supplies for their Alice story print and, you know, Angelic Pretty's Berry Garden um, apron. It feels more mature and it feels like it fits into the time period that Alice lived. All around, I really, really like this one. I feel like this is a very well executed Alice in Wonderland print by Infanta. When it comes to Infanta, I never thought they'd come out with, you know, more than one dress for a specific princess, but they did that with Snow White. Um, and I'm kind of, I feel kind of on the fence with this one. Uh, I really did like their print where they, like the print version where it had the story for Snow White along the edge of the skirt. But for this one, it's more of, it's an OP with absolutely no print. It's solid and it just looks so absolutely lovely. But... It looks a hell of a lot like, you know, Baby the Star Shines Bright, I believe it's called Claudia, their OP. It looks so much like it, and it, that part makes me sad, but I actually like Infanta's version much more than Baby's. I don't... The design feels like a replica, but I know it's not a replica. And honestly, if you put them side by side, it's really different. It's like really hard to tell which one's which. They, If you look up close on the fabrics they use though, they are different fabrics and the designs are a bit different, but it's quite the coincidence that makes me wonder. I don't know what's up with Infanta for that one, but I still really like it. But it kind of makes me go... Cinderella. Now this is a series I can get behind. You know, I really do love Baby the Starshine Bright Cinderella dress, like their one for that, the collab they did with Disney. It is really lovely. Um, but it didn't feel like Cinderella. It, it really didn't. It didn't feel like Cinderella. So when Infanta came out with Cinderella, it felt It felt right because their design for it fell really into place with their Snow White print and their Sleeping Beauty print and it just felt elegant and at the same time it had this mature sort of humble quality to it because it's a very simple design but the print and detailing on the dress is just so lovely. Also, the colorways for this are so absolutely lovely. Um, honestly, when I went to like figure out which one I, the which colorway I really wanted, I had a difficult time because I was like, these colors are so versatile. I mean, like you have the beige that just looks 
elegant with the hints of the roses. It's so gorgeous. But then you also had the deep red, which kind of, I don't know, it just felt like a sort of um, Alice Madness take on Cinderella, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, then you had the navy, which felt sort of reminiscent of their Snow White print, but at the same time it was Cinderella. And then you had the really lovely light blue with the with the pops of um, the red roses. And for me personally, my favorite after like figuring out which one I really liked, I personally like the light blue the best because I feel like that one accents the roses the most and also ties back into some of the other designs by, like, by Disney for what Cinderella looked like. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that the dress doesn't look more Rococo, since Cinderella was a French fairy tale, and, you know, it would have been cute if they did sort of Cinderella, how she would have looked, but, you know, I still feel very attracted to the dress, because it does feel very timely, and I feel like someone could dress this print very well for a more dark classic coordinate and just so lovely or a more mature sweet look. It's just all around I think Infanta did a wonderful job with all their colorways. All the designs for it look phenomenal. I do like the skirt because um, it has a sort of ruffly look to it that kind of plays off of um, Disney's Cinderella but I would have to say the JSK is by far their best design for this print. Just so lovely. They they hit it out of the water for me. Uh, same with their headdresses. I feel like the idea of having either utilizing either a bonnet or a head bow really ties back to what they did with their Snow White and, and Sleeping Beauty print where you where they both put out a bonnet and a head bow so you could decide which way you want to wear it. It was very cute, very lovely, and I think it is 100% a versatile piece. And anyone who loves classic or just really loves fairy tale prints in Lolita fashion, you should hop on this. You should hop on this so freaking fast. So here's a fairy tale we haven't seen since, you know, Disney completely butchered it in their 3D animated form. A Rapunzel print. Now, it isn't called Rapunzel. It's called Flowers Tangled, which I think is really interesting, um, an interesting idea, sort of, uh, for calling it that. And I could definitely tell they were hinting towards Disney's Tangled movie, uh, especially since it's a Rapunzel's print. And if you say Tangled something in relation to Rapunzel, it's always going to bring about Disney in someone's brain that's been, you know, alive when they started going over to 3D animated whatevers, with, and then they messed up everybody's faces. Then it looks weird. Uh, I don't want to get into debate about Disney, <laughs> but um, this is a Rapunzel print. Uh, I haven't seen a Rapunzel print actually. It, it never occurred to me that we lack that princess. Um, I guess it's because I just absolutely shun everything that has to do with Disney's thing now. Um, but this print is actually rather refreshing, um, though it doesn't really dive in on the like the print itself it doesn't really dive into the terrible horribleness which is the Rapunzel story it's still rather lovely and I like the idea that they um of this idea of like her hair is so long that she like puts flowers in it and stuff like that and it hints towards why there's flowers on the dress I think design wise the name fits with it and it looks pretty cute but this has got to be my least favorite fairy tale print ever. Just. Uh. And for me, it really has to do with the colorway. It's like, it's like this deep red or a deep navy. And I mean, there's a beige and the beige is my favorite out of all of them for this. But it's like, I look at it and I'm like, what's happening here? It's. It's not right looking, it's kind of... The colors don't fit the story for me. Um, 
I wanted some sort of soft colors for this dress, if any. Um, maybe a variety of colors like they have for Cinderella. Not this sort of three thing that meh. Because honestly, looking at it, the blue looks more of something you would see for a Snow Queen print. Like Baby the Star Shines Bright Snow Queen dress. And the red looks a little bit too much like a bloody Cinderella thing that they did with their Cinderella dress. So it's kind of like... What's going on here? It kind of feels like they ran out of ideas for how to design the dress around the fairy tale. And honestly, I would have rather they just not have done a Rapunzel print. Um, at all, honestly. The OP kind of looks really bad, in my opinion. The JSK is, it feels standard. It feels standard for me. And the skirt is just plain. Plain and boring. The print itself is very lovely, as always. There are, whoever the artist is that they use for their designs does a really good job. Um, I really like how they sort of make these characters without a face, but they're just a figure, and you know who that figure is, and so you can identify with it. Uh, I think that's a very interesting art style they're going with, and it's very lovely. I just wish they would have taken more time with their color choosing, and designed their skirt and OP much better. I think, though, if they had a better color for better colorways, maybe like a lavender, it would have sort of saved those poor designs, but since it's like this man design on a really disgusting color, it just doesn't float well with me. Sorry Infanta, I don't like, I don't like it. Probably gonna get it anyway, but I, I'm not a fan. Speaking of tragedies, but going more into the gothic and classic designs that they have, the Rose Church's JSK was such an absolute flop. From the amazingness, which was their OP, and how much I adore that print, I was expecting much more for their JSK. Uh, it, it just... I don't like the fabric they chose, the design isn't flattering for the wearer, and it makes... It feels like they were trying to go for something that just wasn't Infanta. Honestly, they didn't... If they... For the little ruffles, if they utilized that with, like, a chiffon, it would have looked so much better. But then again, it has, like, this sort of weird, like, an actual muffin shape to it. Like, it goes like this, and then you have the skirt. And it just... It doesn't look right. It, it really doesn't look right. Uh, I know a lot of people actually really like this JSK. It's just really not for me. It's just, I look at it and I'm like, I'm so glad I got the OP because this thing is such a piece of shit. And it's just, I look at it and I get this really bad taste in my mouth. It's just, no, no, no. Angel's Courtyard, on the other hand, feels like what they should have done with their Rose Church's JSK. And I absolutely love it. <coughs> oh my god, I'm so sick. Okay. Um, but it's just so absolutely gorgeous. This dress is Infanta at their best. They have the really lovely gold detailing. The, the lovely embroidery of it, it's just a well thought out piece and I want to put it on my body. It's just so absolutely beautiful. Uh, just, I, I, I look at it and I feel like this is a great jump from Rose Churches which came out in, I believe that was November? I believe Rose Church's the OP came out in November. It's just a great sort of um, jumping point from there. And it just, it looks super great. If only they just didn't have that train wreck of a JSK for Rose Church's in between, it would have felt like they chucked out just so many great stuff in a row. Um, other things about it, I really like how this comes with a shawl. 
So you sort of complete this look. I know it's going into summer where I am now, but I know for half of the hemisphere it's going into winter. Um, so I feel like this would be a good dress for winter wear, honestly, or fall, just because of how absolutely lovely it is. It's just, I feel like this is something you'd walk around after you go to, like, the theater. And you're, you're walking around, you got your parasol, and you have your little shawl on, and a nice lovely blouse, and you look like the most elegant thing that stepped out of the, the late 19th century. It's just, ugh, I, I, I'm gonna oogle over this dress till I get it, because it's just so absolutely beautiful. When I look at the colors they even chose for this, it's just so vibrant and statement dresses. Like, the red one feels like this sort of, um, like a lusty look, and it's kind of like opposite to what they want for like this angel courtyard sort of title. It feels sort of like it's tapping into motifs of like the seven deadly sins, which is very interesting and a very interesting motif to put in with like this sort of gothic classic dress. Uh, just very lovely. Personally, my favorite would have to be the green, just because it like it feels like envy honestly, like, this sort of, like, envy look that's, like, it has this angelic look to it on the print, but inside it's, like, I'm plotting to destroy everything you're, you're building up for. Uh, I feel like I get maybe too deep for talking about a dress, but honestly, this is the vibe I'm getting from it, and I think it's really effective, and it's one of the things that makes sort of gothic dresses stand out and look so elegant is that like they, they put off an attitude. And sweet dresses do that to an extent, but sometimes it's more of like, I'm bubbly, I'm cute, I'm bubbly, I'm cute, I'm kawaii and I will kill you, sort of like thing, like it's cute. But then with gothic and classic, it feels more of like, I'm very lovely, and I'm not afraid of sh to shoot you with my cane gun. If you know what I mean. I don't know if you know what I mean. I don't even know if I know what I mean. But I just, I really like these colorways, and it feels very much, again, like what they did with Rose Churches, because they had so many different colorways for that one garment that put off completely different ideas for the dress. And with Angel's Courtyard, it's an A-plus drop. I, I love this dress. This, this dress is absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to see people wear it. When it comes to Infanta's merry-go-round print, I feel like this is a nice, simple, classic dress. I, I, I can't see myself wearing it, but I can see other people wearing it and pulling it off really well. Uh, the colors for it are pretty nice. Again, they're they're utilizing their ability to put gold on a dress, uh, which I think goes hand in hand with that sort of gold fad that's going on right now, where it's like, gotta have all the gold jewelry, and the gold shoes, and the gold bag, and the gold tiaras. Um, I, I think this dress is something that can work for now. I don't know if it'll be pulled off in the future when those fads end, but I think it looks pretty cute. Honestly, I feel like construction-wise, it's very nice. It feels sort of um, like a, like they're tapping into what they did for Power and Throne uh, for that series, and kind of what they did with their uh, amusement park print. It feels like sort of a mesh between those two for this one. Uh, I like it. I feel like there are a bunch of things by Infanta that will look well with this dress. It's rather meh for me. Uh, but it's one of their more toned down pieces, and I'm not going to deny, deny that it is. It looks very well constructed, very well thought out. Um, I, I like the button detailing on it and how that sort of like goes into the gold with it. It's just very lovely. All in all, in Fanta, you do really lovely work even if the dress looks really simple. Did you know that Infanta made a steampunk dress? I know, right? It feels like something that classical puppets would do. Classical puppets is generally the one known for their 
steampunk prints. I know. And Fanta came out with their steampunk time machine series. And it looks really freaking badass. Um, they definitely had their work cut out for them when they chose these colorways because they're using like a brown and like this black with the brown, which are usually colors that are not really well pulled off. But damn, they look really good. Oh my. It is a series I did not think Infanta was going to pull out of like their, I don't know where. But it looks really good, and I'm glad to see another brand jumping on the, you know, the train for bringing steampunk and Lolita together because it's there are two fashions that feel like they, they're inspired by the same time period. They deal with the same general shape. Uh, steampunk's a little bit more revealing, by a lot, uh, than Lolita, but they feel like they could easily blend together and. I like that they're sort of meshing here. I, I don't know if really Lolita is blending that much on the other side to Steampunk, uh, but I know that for sure they're becoming a lot more Steampunk prints in Lolita fashion. And I'm really excited to see if there's going to be more popping up. It would be nice to see, like, you know, some more blatantly obvious Steampunk prints from Alice and the Pirates. Because they kind of, like, cater to that style, but then they've never really outright given us a steampunk print. I mean, even Meta has done some, like, you know, steampunky stuff with their, um, sort of, like, Doctor Who-looking print. I uh, forget what it's called. It was, like, Clockwork something. That was a good print, too. But I feel like, for the most part, Infanta really understands what steampunk is for one, and applied that to Lolita and came up with this really gothic, punk-ass looking thing. I mean, you got this eye patch, you got this little mini hat, I, like, I feel like all they need is to give you the accessory of, like, this weapon and you look pretty good to go. And it, it's just, it looks good. Uh, it looks really good. I'm so proud of Infanta for jumping on this, uh, because... Hello, it's kind of like a thing that people need to jump on. There hasn't really been a brand since Classical Puppets that honestly pulls out steampunk prints all the time. And honestly, one of the most innovative things that Infanta's done to sort of blend the two fashions together is how they've sort of morphed the Lolita JSK to what steampunk JSKs would look like. They have like this sort of um, overall-y look to them where it has like this strap that comes up and then like this really tight waist and then the skirt flares out and has all the clockwork stuff on it. And it has like these big industrial looking buckles on it. I feel like anyone in steampunk could easily apply like a holster to the waist that like it kind of already lends itself there for you can you can put a holster on it and have your weapons right there. And it just, it's, it looks really good. Honestly, uh, I've, I have friends that are into steampunk and I feel like they would really appreciate this garment. Uh, as I'm not in that fashion, I cannot say I know everything about it, but I, I, from my understanding of steampunk, this is pretty, this is pretty spot on of what a blend between the two would look like. Uh, and they offer so much in this series, too, just as I said before. I mean, they they have an eye patch. I don't think Infanta's done an eye patch before. I think they may have done one for Power and Throne, but other than that, I don't think they have. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, though, so feel free to correct me. But I, I'd like to see more of their steampunky stuff, because Infanta obviously knows what they're doing. And with that, that completes all the prints and stuff I was going to talk about in this video. Uh, feel free to comment down below your opinions of any of these dresses, or if any of them became your dream dress, maybe you just really don't like them. Uh, if you have an opposing opinion to mine, feel free to let the thingy down below. That's cool to go. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Um, I know a few of you 
have actually gotten the Cinderella dress, um, and I think someone else also got the Snow White one in Sleeping Beauty. So feel free to comment below and let me know the quality on those because I'd be really interested and I think other people would be too. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Like, subscribe, do the doobly doos. I know I only say that like sometimes, but it's, you know, it's kind of like whenever I feel like saying it. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.